and you say, wow. You will look at someone so uniquely after this. Okay, and I really, this is what we call, you start to contemplate and seriously contemplate. Okay, so first, there are three aspects that you we need to know about gaining a human rebirth, okay? First, is the recognition, okay, of the perfect human rebirth. Okay, meaning we need to recognize first that do I have a perfect rebirth? This lifetime. Do you? <laughs> Do you think you have the perfect human rebirth? Oh, come on. You were so confident you were sitting here and now you're like, not so short sure now. <laughs> like, am I breathing? <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, I have no clue. <laughs> right? Yeah, this is this is question now. Like, what is, you know, what is what, right? So, for example, a nugget of gold, right? Aware, when you are aware that looking at a nugget of gold is pure. Who has gold here or like gold? Oh, come on, they're nice. Huh? With, the, with this gold color, this is nice, yeah? So don't say, oh, I have no gold. <laughs> gold is very precious. They're not easy to come by, right? But then when you look at the nugget of a gold, and you say, oh my goodness, it's, this is pure. It's 24 karat, right? Then when you recognize the pureness of that gold, what happens? You find... <laughs> I know what Shirley's thinking now. She said, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> then you re recognize, yes, you're right. Then you recognize the value of that gold. So then when something is valuable, what happens? Well, you just gave me another meaning of value <laughs> that is precious. <laughs> so what happens when something is very valuable? Oh. See, it's gold. I, at least my phone. <laughs> Lock it up. No, there you go. Lock it up. Don't, you know, that means that. That means that, you know, it's an unlikely that you will find another pure like that. So you know what I'm, I'm alluding to? Is that when you find that your life, that your rebirth in this life, is as pure as gold and as precious and valuable, what do you do? you now make sure you have to make good use of this life. Not to sell it, or trade it, and like, give me that and I give you my life. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> really. Yeah? So now, this, is like the recognition of the perfect human rebirth. So, however, when we think all human beings are the same, do we think we're all the same when, you know, we all go to a market, like, you know, like Saturday <laughs> organic market, and you look all the people and you say, oh, we all like organic food. And you say, but are we all the same? What? Some do, some don't. Yeah. Well, sometimes they think we're all the same because we're all like organics, you know? Like then you, you what? 
we are then building credentials, you know, another title ship of an organic practitioner, of an organic eggplant practitioner. Well, somebody's like shaking their shoulders. I'm not saying organics are not good, okay? It's just that we label things and then all of a sudden when people come to those, you know, let's say Starbucks, for example. Have you noticed like all people that go to Starbucks? There's another credential. We're building another kind of people that goes to Starbucks and sits there and cappuccino frappe, you know, like with half a half, like oh, one cup. And there's about five title of mochaccino frappe with half and half and soy, half strength, half strength double shot, True. give it all. And, I, and then you get, I have a coupon. <laughs> sorry, I'm I said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I thought I'm in mean, countdown. This is a Starbucks, I should not be using coupon. You see, these are all, you know, like again, credential building, right? But the point being is we are definitely not all the same. Okay? Human, if we think all human beings are the same, this is not so. Now, however, this, we have to be very careful, okay? And when you look at Shirley next to you, well then, Shirley, I mean Rachel. I'm really confusing her. I said, well, I'm better than Shirley because I'm taller. I speak better Chinese than her. Now, that we need to be careful. I'm talking about the rebirth of being human. All right? We are definitely not the same. Okay? Not all humans obtain. Okay? Here's the thing. Not all humans obtain the perfect rebirth. Not about complexion, okay? Not about beauty. Although, yes, it comes with it, okay? But it's not about that. There are certain qualities, okay, that we need to realize, like looking at the mirror and say, wow, if I have all these qualities, what am I doing sleeping? Gotta wake up, wake up, be awakened, and realize, yeah. So such rebirth is unique, must possess six, 18 specific qualities. In, in, in Tibetan, they call it Dajo Ngi Milu, Del, or Dal, actually it's Dal means leisure or rest, okay? It implies that there is freedom to practice the Dharma. Jor means endowments. It's a gift. It's like, wow, like Rinpoche being born as Rinpoche. How come not all of us are Rinpoche? You see? Did he actually wake up and, you know, when he cried outside and, and he, does he know he was Rinpoche? No, but he has the qualities, you see, that differentiates him from us. Okay. Shirley and me, different quality. But we are talking about the access of Buddha Dharma. You have to have 18 qualities to even practice the Dharma. So they, they divided this, okay? This is through Lama Tsongkhapa, stages of the path. So I'll name first, you know, the eight freedoms. When, you, when we are born, you know, 
we have to have eight freedoms. Okay, first. What is the first one? The first, first quality is not to be born, okay, as a hell sentient being. Okay? In this realm, practically, there is continual and unbearable suffering. Continual. None is stop. So, are we at the moment having a hell realm? You, are you in that? Yes, of course not. <laughs> Am I confusing you? Yes, just to make sure you're awake from that yummy lunch. <laughs> because we're going to be in a different realm in a little bit. Okay? So yes, you are not born in a hell realm. Because yes, we have suffering, but it's not continued. We have, therefore, that is already one of the freedoms that you obtain in this birth. So yay, I'm not in that realm. Uh -huh. Very good. Now there's another one. What's the second one? So, but, but anyways, in this realm, there is a continual suffering, right? Non-stop, the hell realm. So what causes that? from past life, what caused that? Karma. Yes, but what karma? Remember, karma is causes and effect. That's just a different terminology. Okay? What causes suffering in hell realm? Come on, what's your first precept? Killing. 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 Yes, so therefore, you know, therefore for us to be here, Enjoying the Dharma, you therefore have not refrained from killing. Yeah, kill, like big killing, okay? Meaning killing and other similar deeds are the main causes of for rebirth on that realm, the hell realm. You see? All right? So now, what's the number two? Not to be born as a hungry ghost. Are we a ghost? Maybe sometimes. <laughs> or, you know, maybe within a 24 hour you're a bit of a ghost and, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We call this not to be born as a hungry ghost because hungry ghosts are what? They can never satisfy their hunger and thirst and have no opportunity to practice the Dharma. Why? Because they're so busy looking for food. Yeah. You know how those street beggars in India, for example, how can they listen to the Dharma when they can only think about when and what to eat for the next meal? So without, for example, for us, even without a food for a day, we suffer tremendously. Who's taking precepts sometimes? You know, meaning no food for just one course of a meal. And we are like, oh, I'm not eating tonight, so I better eat large on lunch. <laughs> like, with this bowl, I need it bigger so that I can sustain until breakfast. <laughs> How much more for a hungry ghost who continuously feel hungry? So and you cannot practice the Dharma when you're hungry, right? So I'm glad we just ate. So don't complain. <laughs> so what cause? 
being in this realm? What causes it? It's very important. Huh? Does anybody know? <laughs> I'm throwing, I'm wasting all my food. <laughs> well, that's the result, you know, of over overeating, overdoing, over loving, over attachment. So the cause of of this realm is greed. Ah. Yeah. Avarice and covetous. Being covetous meaning I want it all and I'm not sharing. Or oh, you want something or I want something Shirley has. And I want it all. This a resultant, okay? The hungry ghost realms. So, highlight that, okay? If you have a little bit of that particular, hmm, you know, the word greedy. So, hungry ghost doesn't only, uh, uh, it's not talking about food only, it's talking about everything. Yeah, being hungry, yes. Because never satisfy their hunger of everything, thirst of everything. Your thirst, for example, for indulgence, your thirst over material things, your thirst of money, your thirst of lust, okay? Your hunger, and I want this, I want that, yeah. 